Okay, what you see here is <clears throat> I've taken uh, some Nikon primes and I've adjusted them to be a tilt shift uh, by inserting uh, portions of a CV joint boot. It's made out of silicone. It's uh, non-corrosive. Uh, will uh, withstand you know high temperatures and a lot of fatigue and wear and tear. And so essentially, yeah. Um, first, yeah, of course, you start by taking off, you know, the ring that holds the camera to the lens. Then uh, you also have to get rid of all the black stuff inside. Uh, most of it unscrews, but you know, a good pair of pliers will get rid of that. And then you also have to remove, you know, your f-stop ring and uh, your guide ring. And as you can see, I, I removed not only the guide ring, yeah, but the little border in between. So I removed three rings, and then I had to cut off about five to seven millimeters off the top, so that I could get this flange down back to at least where the original lens was seated. Otherwise, it ends up being a diopter, and uh, you have a nice little macro um, lens with a great depth of field, but uh, you know not the uh, not the effect you were looking for. And I used the boot clamp that came with the uh, the CV joint boot. I just clamped it to the lens, and of course, you know, I left it just enough room because when it uh, goes to uh, infinity, when I focus to infinity, and uh, it racks back, that's the limit I put it on. And of course, I use JB Well to join join the ring to the end of the CV joint boot. Of course, yeah, I had to clear out you know a whole bunch of odds and ends, you know, all the way down to where the focal ring was, you know, to, in order for this to you know be smooth and not have any obstructions. Of course, you're asking about the uh, the f-stop. I left it open. You know, this one goes up to one one four, yeah, and this one opens up to a two eight. And so essentially, yeah, I just used a, a screwdriver to rack the rod until the aperture opened up all the way. And then, you know, on this one, I think I used uh, some JB Well just a spot to keep that rod in place. And this one, I think, uh, uh, just got stuck during the process. Anyway, this is what the footage looks like. Um, yeah, with the 50, the nifty 50 lens converted this way, you get a nice tight depth of field, um, narrow, you know, since this one swings a lot, you know, you can play a lot with the depth of field left to right, in and out, up and down. And then with the 2.8, yeah, with the 2.8, uh, you get, of course, a wider, a wider field of view. For some reason, I was able to seat this one just right, so it has a really great, uh, focal length, you know, at, at a far distance. And of course, since the, this is a smaller lens and, a, and, a, and a, the same size ring, it has a lot more room to wobble around. You can get some great, you know, distorted stuff.